Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review auction listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Line Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age. We also do it to make sure the sellers of these vehicles are disclosing everything, at least so we can tell. And then also, if you're interested in these vehicles, you're probably an enthusiast, that's why you're here. Uh, also, you might be buying one of these vehicles or looking to buy or sell one. And I think these discussions can be helpful uh, to you know better inform you, better prepare you, you know, should you be in the market for one of these. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this uh, beautiful 1993 Toyota Land Cruiser FZJ80. This is the third year of the 80 series here in the United States. Uh, first year with the 1FZ FE, that 212 uh, horsepower rated inline six gasoline <laughs> powered motor. Uh, anyway, so this one is going to actually be kind of easy, I hope. This is a repost um, on Bring a Trailer. It was listed previously. It sounds like the uh, yeah, the buyer, you know, was a douche. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go through the details. But we never covered this one originally. So this is, uh, you know, I guess good good for me, good for us, whatever. All right. So this vehicle, it's got, uh, yeah, black 17-inch fuel wheels, a sunroof, receiver hitch, folding third row seats, uh, all the normal stuff. It looks like it's been converted to use uh, R134A refrigerant. Uh, early 1983, some of them used R12. The selling, de selling dealer acquired the truck in May of 2022 and is added about 5,000 miles of the 136,000 miles shown. Uh, and I am doing this all out of order. I'm going to finish this paragraph and then I'm going to get back to our normal uh, programming. Uh, but it's yeah offered with no reserve and it's got a spare set of wheels, assuming they're the factory wheels. And then uh, it's got a clean Carfax report and a clean Oregon title. But yeah, it's located in Shoals, Oregon. Uh, it's got 136,000 miles, like we said earlier. Uh, it's not triple locked. It has the center locking differential. It's the dark emerald pearl paint. Uh, gray leather upholstery on the inside and everything else looks about normal uh, yeah so this one based on the looks of it is one that didn't come with roof rack and uh, running boards uh, so you can see the proper treatment here and the way this should look with these uh, you know, these mud flaps and again I like hype on this every or harp on this every time uh, you, if you're gonna use this on gravel or dirt, something that's going to get kicked up, have these mud flaps because you do not want to be blasting your rockers or your frame with rocks and gravel. Basically, you just every time you go down like a gravel road, it's like a sand blaster. Uh, let's see. So nothing else there. So now we can jump back over to the uh, yeah, the paragraphs. Uh, let's see. Close-up photographs of a ding and damage to the left rear corner are shown in the gallery. You can even see that here from this image. And then uh, the sailing dealer states that the paintwork on the left rear quarter panel is flat. So left rear quarter. So that's uh, left rear quarter. That's back here. Uh, and then looks like they put ceramic coating in March of 2023. Uh, this was sold in April of 2023, um, or was listed in April. Um, so just to put you know some context in the time frame. Uh, let's see. So yeah, the winning bidder failed to follow through. Uh, so their word was not their bond. <laughs> uh, no issue with the uh, the vehicle. So yeah, this is kind of like a common thing. I mean, not common. I mean, it seems to. You know, I don't know. And not every time that it happens do we find out about it because the vehicle is relisted. Uh, you know, like there's an individual that uh, had a no buyer on Carson Bids, and they didn't end up going back through Carson Bids. They just have it like on Facebook. So, uh, so you might not always know. Anyway, the tires are kind of like an off-brand Hercules Terra Track. Um, yeah, they were mounted 5,000 miles ago. I'm not familiar with that brand. Uh, let's see, a removed set of stock wheels is included in the cell, so that's great. Uh, we've got yeah, factory seats here in the inside. Those look pretty good, uh, as you'd expect for 130, you know, 37 or whatever, 1,000 miles. Uh, yeah, cockpit looks good. Anything else out of the ordinary? I don't see anything. Let's talk about maintenance. Fluid services were performed within the last year, so you'd want to make sure and see exactly what was done. Did it include differentials, transmission, uh, power steering, brake, all those things you would want to find out. That's just a broad, uh, <laughs> broad statement uh, that could cover you know, a lot of different things. Let's go ahead and pull this up in Carfax. And let's see here. So yeah, scrolling through this last owned in Oregon, looks like it was in Washington and Oregon. So yeah, West Coast vehicle. That is a good indicator as far as corrosion goes. Uh, regarding Carfax, there's just not much information here. Uh, our first entry is in 1997, so when the vehicle is like four years old uh, with 92,000 miles. So that's pretty pretty good clip for, for mileage to be added there. Uh, it looks like they reported it as um, yeah, like a lease. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good pace there for mileage. And then, yeah, roughly since like, <laughs> what, 1998, it's only had... 
you know, 20,000 miles put on it. So not a lot of instances to check that. So we want to just not, not that it's particularly common, but it can happen where, you know, somebody rolls back the odometer and such. Let's go ahead and plug it into Google. And uh, so we do, this is going to be interesting. So I don't think this is still live. Usually like the bring a trailer, they've got rules that make it so that um, you can't have it advertised at the same time. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, they've pulled the price off of this listing off of Oregon Live. Looks like a, you know, local Oregon newspaper. Uh, but we can see the listing or the price here in the metadata. So looks like they were uh, trying to get 25000 So let's go back to what this thing was listed at before or what it sold for, which you could assume is maybe a little inflated, but it was, yeah, 22500 So a little bit of a premium is what they were maybe most recently looking to get out of it. Uh, let's go ahead and plug this into vehicle history. So yeah, we've got a listing or some pictures from 2022, possibly when they first picked it up. You can see uh, that dent there and you can see the bumper corners. Both of them are kind of pushed down. Uh, do we see the little, like the flat black paint? Yeah, I can't really see that there. But this is from June of 2022. Yeah, presumably when they first, the selling dealer first picked it up uh, at 133,000 miles. So let's just double check that. So let's go to June of 2022. So that's in between these two entries. So that's when, yeah, a &L Auto Sales yeah, likely first picked it up. So yeah, I'd presume that that's when, yeah, the selling dealer picked it up. We'll try and tie that in together. Let's look at this photo real quick. Yeah, a &L Auto Sales. And then let's see if that matches uh, WLOA Auto. Yeah, could be the same thing. Not sure though. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and jump into the photos. There are no videos in this case, but yeah, let's jump through these. Yeah. So very clean look without the, um, yeah, the factory running boards and the roof rack. That's the, my way to my, my favorite way to see these line cruisers. Um, yeah, those tires look pretty good. I don't, don't really know anything about that brand, but yeah, they look like a pretty substantial thing looking here at the front and just taking the opportunity to consider symmetry, uh, body lines and such. Yeah. That all looks like really straight. Uh, it looks pretty good. Maybe, a l yeah, I was going to say maybe a little something here on the uh, front driver's side, uh, like on the fender where it interacts with the, um, with the valence panel, but it could just be a little like kind of sun glare, uh, maybe a little bend up here on the passenger side, but yeah, overall, like this is, it's a pretty clean front bumper. Uh, yeah, regarding the idea, you know, just double checking against like odometer rollback and things like that, you know, looking for, you know, rock chips. Um, I do see a couple like instances, both in the hood and the lower valence. So, and you know, they more or less match. We'll look for some detail photos just to confirm that. Um, looking down here on the passenger side of the vehicle. Yeah, it looks like a pretty clean. There's a little dent here on this lower, uh, lower passenger front door. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that looks good. Moving around here and you can really see that ding there. Um, the rest of the body on that side, it looks pretty good. Uh, moving around here to the back, it will take an opportunity to take this in. So I'm guessing that's, yeah, the, the tailgate's kind of kicked out a little bit here, it looks like. Looks like they, yeah, maybe shut it on something. And yeah, the bumper corners, you know, they've obviously been, been tagged. Maybe a little paint defect here on the right side of the upper tailgate. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it looks, looks pretty good here from the rear. Yeah, that's, that's such a great look. Look at that. I mean, notwithstanding the damage there, but nice, like, meaty tires. It looks great. Yeah, so it looks like the spare doesn't match. Uh, I'd be curious uh, if the you know, the wheel matches or whether it's, um, you know, whether it's a total mismatch. But moving through the rest of these, I mean, I do see, like, a little bit of rust here on the trailer hitch. But, yeah, this is probably going to look pretty good underneath, given the Washington and Oregon history. Yeah, moving here on the passenger or the driver's side, that looks good. I'm trying to see where they're saying that the paint looks flat. Uh, that can be an indicator of a dent. There are some kind of weird reflections going on here, so I had to presume that that's the area. Um, but yeah, I mean the rest of it looks looks pretty good. Yeah, can't can't really tell what's going on. Um, yeah, with that paint from at least these photos so far. Uh, let's see. The hood works, the upper hatch works, tailgate drops. That's all good. Uh, looking for some detail shots here. Okay, so you can see we've got the uh, this fender 
you know, this little arch or whatever with the uh, with the gasket there. That looks like that's been replaced just based on the condition. Although 137 miles, yeah, maybe didn't treat that so bad. And what I just can we take a moment and appreciate like how good this looks, man. Yeah, but those uh, those gaskets those look you know pretty fresh and new. Um, same thing. Looks like the windshield maybe has been yeah you know, replaced and yeah you know, looks like a new gasket. Looks good. Yeah, I'd even go so far as to say that the uh, the little piece over the gutter here uh, it was replaced as well it looks pretty good uh, yeah I mean I say that and then yeah, I see some this could just be extra like adhesive uh, you know urethane from mounting the windshield but yeah a little little sloppy there uh, and then you know, one one thing that does happen on these occasionally the where this trim rubs into the paint can kind of create a little bit of rust not a big deal because it'll just continue to wear it it probably will never actually rust because the yeah, it just doesn't get an opportunity to rest up. Uh, this rear gasket all looks good. You know, sometimes you end up with rust, especially in areas like Washington and Oregon where it um, yeah, can rain a lot. That looks good. Uh, here, looking at the top of the passenger door, uh, there is a little bit of defect here in the frame. Uh, that could be from either maybe somebody trying to break into it or perhaps, you know, they lock their keys in the car. Um, yeah, kind of a shame that that happens. I wish there was a, yeah, always, and I, I don't actually do this, but yeah, it might be a good idea to have one of those like magnetic key things like underneath the vehicle. Anyway, these doors look good. Just a little, maybe a little bit of like rash and stuff like there at the bottom. Yeah, other than that, this looks good. Just to compare, you know, this side and that little defect in the door frame, you can see that's not present here on the driver's side. This piece here, this B pillar, that doesn't seem like that's down all the way. See how the gap's a little bit different? It's just kind of weird. I haven't really noticed. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. And then, yeah, I don't really understand why that would be like that. I, you know, maybe that piece can, you know, it's got a little movement. Uh, maybe a little dent here above the um, driver door handle. And then, yeah, I think you can see right here where the paint on this rear quarter, just above the little hip, it's a it's little, little off there. Yeah, this all looks looks pretty good though. Yeah, it's all clean. Oh yeah, I was gonna say maybe you could see a little bit of the paint here. Maybe that's what we're seeing here with this kind of reflection. Uh, but yeah, something's going on there. Um, back to the comment earlier about maybe there being some dent or something here on this uh, front driver's side. Yeah, I'm not seeing that here in these detail shots. And then the amount of rock chips seem commensurate with the mileage. Tail lights all look good. Yeah, they must have they must have hit something here on this corner. And then there's I think there's more more to the story. It's not just you know like a paint issue. So definitely check you know, for Bondo in this area, if you get an opportunity or, you know, have, you know, you could even ask the seller to see if they can do a paint thickness measurement. But yeah, don't expect that corridor to be intact. Uh, emblems and the other sticker there in the back, those look good. Uh, yeah, so back to the idea with these uh, fender flares in the rubber gasket. If we look at this one here on the driver's side, uh, so the rear piece has the gasket in place, but the um, yeah, the front piece doesn't. A uh, little bit of a defect here in the paint. Yeah, kind of interesting what, what would cause that. Um, it seems like the paint not only has it, yeah, it looks like it's chipped away as well and a little bit of corrosion under there. Yeah, besides that, the paint seems to look pretty good. Not really seeing too many issues or defects. There's that dent that we talked about earlier. The rockers all look good. Yep, rockers look good on both sides. Yeah, and you can see where that tailgate's been yeah, bowed out. Yeah, that's a shame. Luckily, um, yeah, 6M1, this particular color, this... Uh, Emerald Green Pearl is a pretty popular color. You should be able to find a replacement tailgate pretty easy if you wanted to replace it. Yeah, just some light corrosion there on the trailer hitch. We were able to see that you know far out, but yeah, this is the original trailer hitch. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty good after uh, yeah, 30 years.
mud flaps. And there's your, all your tires. Yes, these tires are 285 uh, 70 R17. So these are, yeah, 33 inch, I believe. It looks good. Even the frame yeah, behind these, uh, yeah, these Wilson tires look pretty good. All right. Yep. Yeah, so there's the confirmation that the spare is, yeah, I don't know if it, that's the original tire. I know that I, I'm pretty sure the original uh, Land Cruiser when it came out, it came with these Michelin LTXs. Yeah, maybe this is an original tire, but yeah, it's upside down in the mount. Definitely get that flipped over and save the finish on that wheel. Uh, but then, yeah, the frame behind here looks like it's been touched up with some uh, with some paint, but it looks looks good nonetheless. All right, shifting to the interior, a little bit of wear on the driver bolster. The leather looks yeah, pretty good. Otherwise, a couple other defects as we go through these photos, as you would expect for. Yeah, 130 something thousand miles. The carpet looks clean. Yeah, leather looks looks pretty good. Uh, you get some conditioner on these, and that should extend the life of, of the leather. Uh, back to the idea of this having been out, you know, maybe being out in the sun or you know where it, where it's parked. Uh, it doesn't really seem to be the case. The steering wheel leather looks pretty good. The shifter handle leather, at least that I can tell, it looks good as well. So I wouldn't expect to see like a crack in the dash either. Uh, carpets with the floor mats out, that looks good. Uh, and switches here on the driver door, that all looks good as well. Yeah, it's a shame this isn't locked, uh, triple locked. That would yeah, go a long way into bringing the value up. But yeah, 135,596 miles. Uh, by the odometer, I would assume that's ticked up since, um, yeah, since these photos were taken. I think these are the same photos that were taken for the listing um, yeah, earlier in the year. But yeah, this interior looks pretty clean. This is this is the way this is what you want it to look like. Uh, there's the original stereo. I'd assume that works. And then also I talk about there should be a little switch or a harness connector behind the dash here. Just pop out this uh, blink and plug in the uh, you know, the center diff lock switch. So you can have that be selectable when you want it. But yeah, this looks this looks really good. Uh, it is missing, I believe, even in 1993 and four. They had the little kind of you know, gasket that goes in between these two console pieces just means maybe somebody's been in there. Uh, but it's also a possibility that 93 and 84 didn't have that off to check my photos for uh, for my 94, see if that's there. But yeah, that all looks really good. Uh, just a little bit of sag in the back of the front row seats. Headliner seems to look good. Carpets look good back here. Second row seat leather looks great. Uh, doors look good. Yeah, this is, this is pretty clean on the inside. So this is, yeah, this is like one of those that you know, for an 80 series, even though it's unlocked, you'd expect to go, this is, yeah, this is like as much money as it'll go for, I would guess. Uh, one thing that's kind of getting my attention here, just a little bit of wear here on the sill where the driver gets in and out. And then also for, I don't know if they're always driving it around like this, but yeah, they don't have like a floor mat down here on the original carpet. That's a big no-no in my opinion. Uh, also, you can see the crack here in the bezel around the driver door handle on the interior side. Uh, that's likely cracked because they had the door panel off at some point to replace either like a door lock actuator or, you know, window regulator. Um, no signs of paintless dent repair in here. I will note, yeah, I was going to say that these, the finish on these screws doesn't look right. Uh, I thought they're normally like a kind of like a silver plating, but, you know, yeah, it looks, it's fine. Uh, moving here to the back, yeah, very clean cargo area. Again, like the, the story here is that the interior of the truck is in great interior condition. Uh, you can see the original kind of plating on these uh, rear hatch uh, or the tailgate latches. Yeah, very clean here in the back. Yeah, and this is what you would like to see <laughs> in, the, in the front driver area so they're not getting dirt and stuff into the original carpet. Moving to the engine bay, uh, with it being a 1993, you're not going to see VIN stickers. We haven't seen VIN stickers on any of the doors, and yeah, we're not going to see them here, you know, on the fenders or on the hood. Um, but yeah, you can see the insulator here on the you know bottom side of the hood that's in place. Uh, engine bay looks clean, looks tidy. Uh, battery isn't being retained properly, and even though it's been converted to R134A, it still has the original kind of dryer location. But radiator looks good. I'd assume that's been replaced. And the wiring harness is being retained properly. Uh, this seems like a very well-maintained engine bay. Yeah, it looks really clean. Not really seeing much out of place. Um, you know, like the uh, throttle cable is where it should be. The uh, cruise control cable is going and is routed where it needs to be. Yeah, this seems very tidy and very clean. Just a little little corrosion on some of these fasteners, but yeah, nothing nothing to worry about. Uh, moving to the undercarriage. Yeah, this frame looks great. Uh, it looks like they've kind of well, 
there's items on the front of the engine. It's like the oil pump, uh, the distributor, uh, the front main sill. Those things, you know, are, are very common leakers as well as sometimes power steering. So you can see there's been historical leaks here on the, um, yeah, the axle, I uh, kind of shifted over to the, to the driver's side, but the burr fields look pretty good. Not seeing any drips under the tires, at least that I can see. Um, transfer case looks good. Just got a little bit of grime on it. Uh, transmission and all that seems pretty dry And the frame here as we move backward. Looks phenomenal. Yeah, that all looks good. Uh, yes, originally a K292 truck, so unlocked. There's the rest of our labels and stickers. Looks like somebody's been in there to fix an issue with the wiring here in this uh, rear uh, driver's side door based on that electrical tape. Looks like you just got one key. <laughs> get get another one made and maybe another two made and yeah, stick it underneath the vehicle. But yeah, this is, this is a good looking truck. Uh, Price is going to be relatively easy on this one uh, because it was, you know, auctioned off really not that long ago. Uh, so just to refresh my memory, so this was sold for twenty two five. That's a that's a pretty good price, I think. I'd I'd be curious to go through the comments, and I would advise you if you're interested in picking this up, read through all of those comments and just understand, you know, what happened. Understand the comments that were asked previously, and just you know, get a really good feeling for the vehicle. Um, with them, you know, looking for you know twenty five thousand, that that seems like almost a pretty reasonable ask given the mileage. Um, just a couple little defects here and there. Uh, the most Notable things that are kind of curious are the uh, yeah that rear quarter kind of paint issue, and then kind of that chip paint on the uh, on the cowl and the driver's side. Other than that, like this thing is pretty mint, looks pretty good. So I I'd be surprised to be honest if it didn't get up to twenty five thousand. But I'll uh, kind of go with uh, I, th I think the market's going to more or less show the same you know result here as it did before. Although historically, seeing re auctions re lists, they usually haven't gone up or exceeded. Um, the previous listing. So there's a chance this goes for less than what it went for before, 22,500. And, but I, I think I'll, I'll put 23,000. I think that's probably a reasonable price given the mileage. But yeah, there's a chance this thing ends up in the, you know, even lower 20s than what it was. So anyway, there you have it. There's the review on this one. Hope you appreciated the video and yeah, the insights. And I appreciate you taking time out every day to check this out. Uh, have a great day. See ya.